Never let anybody tell you that football isn't amazing, but also do not let anyone tell you that it's not insane. Who saw this result coming this afternoon, OUFC fans? Not me, that's for sure. And after a bad week where we had two losses uh, of Accrington and Bolton, it was just we had to stew on them for a while, didn't they? They were festering and uh, we just needed, wanted a response from Oxford United. You knew this was going to be a difficult game. Whew, but it certainly didn't pan out like that. Oxford battered Charlton this afternoon. Done the double over them. And it's, uh, as I say, I didn't see it coming, but it did finish Charlton Athletic nil, Oxford United 4. We've been slightly fortunate both times we've played Charlton this season. They've been missing a whole host of players, and that was the same today, most notably uh, Anuke. And they've had two losses themselves recently, but at the Valley, they're usually a much better side than they are away. Uh, but... What can I say? It was our day today. And you have to give credit to Robinson right off the bat for changing that formation. I questioned it last week when I said, what are we ever going to do to change it? Because it looked like the 4-3-3 was just set in stone. And it was just going to be like, honestly, what I said, you score a goal, we score a goal, and back and forth games all the way till the end of the season. But Robinson was proactive and he has changed it. And he's come up with a 3-5-2 formation which means Baldock and Taylor are up front. I know we've tried that earlier on in the season against Bolton, but that was more to of the fact of players being missing. This seems like it is a tactical change to try and make us a bit more solid at the back, to try and stop making us so exposed down the left-hand side. And I know for the likes of, for example, Brown, who came in off, off the bench today, is more used to playing in a three at the back rather than a two at the back. But the most mo notable absentee was Steve Seddon, who's been a pretty much a regular all the way through the season. He was replaced. Those three at the back were long, more and McNally. It meant Ryan Williams came into the side. I'm always a big fan of that. Sykes is the right wing back. Kane, White, Brannigan in the middle. Baldock and Taylor up front. And I think all you can say in this one, I know it's a cliche, is goals just massively change games. And it was a quite an even game. And I thought Charlton started the game quite well. But Oxford scored two really good goals uh, just after 20 minutes. Two goals from Taylor. Really good move. First one was the clearance, which Charlton kind of made a mess of, and Oxford got the ball into Taylor. It was a wonderful finish by Matty Taylor uh, into the top corner of the net. But the second goal was a really wonderful strike, a real team move up through the lines. Ryan Williams with a beautiful ball in behind. Taylor with a shot through the legs of McGillivray. Uh, not the best bit of goalkeeping, I would say. Good finish by Matty T, but... Um, not the best bit of keeping, but he did have a good afternoon and certainly kept the score down in the second half. But those two goals really did break the back of Charlton Athletic and Oxford were very much in control from that moment on. And we went into halftime at 2-0 up, very happy, very much at peace and just hoping that uh, the next goal is ours and not Charlton's. Not long after halftime, it was Oxford United's third goal, and it's Sam Baldock's first goal for Oxford United, and it is wonderful to be able to say that. We've all got really high hopes for Baldock now, haven't we, that he's going to come on and be that additional striker that we've wanted. Winner has not been that man. We got rid of Adji. Baldock is certainly a quality player to come into this side. If he can stay fit... We've seen already what he can add and what a wonderful finish outside the area. He gets the ball and he, rather than looking to play a teammate in, he just glides it across the box and just curls it into the bottom right-hand side of the goal. And that felt like game over from that point down, really, didn't it? Oxford were very much on top, but there wasn't without incident in this game. Ex-Oxford United, Sean Clare getting a red card after a tangle with Matty Taylor. Look, Charlton fans, I know you're going to hate Matty Taylor after this game. He is a git. If we were playing against him, we would be screaming at him, calling him a bloody git. But he's our git, so we love him. And he's scored 18 goals now for us this season. But he will also get involved in these little tangles and he will get involved. He will be, he will make defenders afternoons a bit of a nightmare. He loves the needle part of the game as well. Coming together, referees deemed it, there was a bit of afters as well, wasn't there? But the referees deemed it as Claire as the one denying the goal scoring opportunity, serious foul play. He gets a red, Taylor gets a, a yellow and the, the game just gets even more 
perfect from Oxford United's point of view, really, from that point on. And I know a lot of people didn't like Sean Clare when he was at Oxford. And I mean, there, were two, there was another ex-Oxford player out today, Elliot Lee. And Elliot Lee didn't have a great game, but I would have loved him to have signed for Oxford. I think he's a cracking player. Uh, but we haven't missed him too much this season. I, I thought we would really miss a player of his quality, but we, we haven't. But Sean Clare, um, yeah, it, it never really worked for him at Oxford. And I don't think he's been pretty bad for Charlton. I mean, let me know, Charlton fans. Do you like Sean Clare? Do you not like Sean Clare? Because he was pretty much public enemy number one when he was with us. But he, he saw red. Uh, Charlton actually got a little bit better after that. And, and they, they actually threatened the, the goal a few times. Looked like they might have got one back. But it was Oxford who ultimately got the fourth goal. And again, a fine move after what seemed like ages of Oxford just keeping possession. We finally got the ball forward. Everyone backed off Brannigan. You know what Brannigan's been like this season. He first thought, bugger it, I'm going to take a shot. And it flew into the top quarter of the net. And now Brannigan is up and running and scoring goals. He looks such a dominating midfielder this season. He seems to be getting better week on week. And now I've heard that he has a magic hat. Yes, the fans sung about it. I'm yet to see it. But apparently... Brannigan has a magic hat. There could have been further goals for Oxford United from White, from Winnell, from Sykes, but McGillivray stood tall and kept that score down. But it was still a miserable afternoon for Charlton Athletic. Uh, a glorious one for Oxford. What anything that could go right did go right for us. And unbelievably, after starting the day outside of the playoffs, that's put us up to fourth place in the league. What a tight end of the season we are having. We've seen so many other sides. MK Don's looking in amazing form. Wickham are struggling. Um, Plymouth look good, Sunderland are struggling. So it is all to play for. We've had a bad week. We've bounced back. We've got crew on Tuesday night, which you are hoping for should be a relatively straightforward three points. But as we thought when we went to Accrington, that would be an easy three points. We will come unstuck, so Oxford are going to be on it. But do we play this formation again? Is Robinson going to play this again? Is he going to go back to 4-3-3? Is Seddon going to come into the side? I actually personally hope he sticks with it. And I think you all do too. If he changes it and we lose, there will be a lot of question marks. So I think there's no need to really change a winning side. Obviously, McNally got injured and Brown came in. So hopefully he's not out for too long. But other than that, I think keep it the same and let those boys go again. An amazing result. Charlton, it's not been a great season for you guys all the way through. You've been kind of struggling in the mid-table region. Let me know what's gone wrong. Let me know if you're happy with Johnny Jackson. Let me know why you can improve. And if you still think you've got half a chance of getting in the playoffs, because you never know, there is still quite a few games to go. But Oxford fans, enjoy it. Enjoy your Saturday night. Um, it feels a hell of a lot better than it did last weekend when I had a lot of question marks. But they were well, very well answered today by OUFC. And uh, yeah, move on to crew on Tuesday night. Enjoy your Saturday evening. Hit like, hit subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you again very soon.